Hello everyone! For today's experiment, we will be making bath bombs. For the materials, we'll be needing measuring spoons, mixing bowls, baking soda, citric acid, cornstarch, water, a mixing spoon, and then for the optional materials, we can use food coloring, scents or essential oils, or a mold. In our first step of making our bath bombs, we're going to add half a cup of baking soda into our mixing bowl. After this, we're going to be adding a quarter cup of cornstarch into our mixing bowl as well. Next, we're going to want to use our mixing spoon and mix together the powders. In doing this, we're going to also want to remove any clumps that we see. I found the best way to do this is by just simply taking the mixing spoon and crushing up the clumps that you can visually see. Eventually, you'll be able to get rid of as many clumps as possible. This mixture will eventually look like this where you see no more large clumps visible at all. Next, we'll be adding in our food coloring. I've chosen a blue food coloring to add to our mixture. In fact, this food coloring ran out, so I ended up using a second bottle of food coloring as well. A more saturated color will come from adding in more food coloring. This is also the step to add in any scents or essential oils. I did not want a scent, so I did not add either of those. Next, we're going to want to mix in our food coloring into our powders. We're going to want to try to remove as many of those clumps of food coloring that we see here with our mixing. This means that we should mix as thoroughly as possible. As we mix, we'll start to see that our powder becomes the color of the food coloring that we added. However, with our mixing, it will not be as vibrant. and That's okay because in our future steps, we'll start to see this color show through a bit more. I actually moved on to using my hands to mix in the food coloring. I found that this made it a lot easier to reduce those clumps, and I found the best way to do that is to pick up any clumps that you see and crush it with your hands and then mix that into the powder once again. After a while, you'll see that the clumps of food coloring have decreased in size and that the powder will have gained some of the color of the food coloring. Now we're going to add in a teaspoon of water into our mixture and then using our mixing spoon or our hands, we're going to try to incorporate that as thoroughly as possible into our powder. As we do this, we will see new clumps forming and I found the best way to reduce these clumps in size is by using our hands, using the same method of picking up the clumps and crushing those up. Once the water has been thoroughly incorporated, we're then going to add in another teaspoon of water and once again, mix it into our mixture. We're then going to keep adding in our water teaspoon by teaspoon and mixing it in after each teaspoon until our mixture has achieved a sort of damp sand texture. In this clip, you can see that our mixture has achieved this texture and is able to be easily packed in. We also see that it's now achieved a more vibrant blue color. Another way to tell that your mixture is now ready to move on to the next step is that when you pack it together, it'll retain its shape as you can see here. Next, we're going to add in a quarter cup of citric acid and mix that in. We're going to want to try to reduce as many of the large clumps that we see as possible. Once again, I found it was a lot easier to mix it up by hand using our same method of taking any visible large clumps and crushing those up and then mixing it together. After the citric acid has been mixed in, we can then begin to shape our bath bomb. I found that the best way to do this was to simply pack together the powder into a ball shape. If you want, you can also use a mold in order to have different shapes, and you don't even need to use a ball shape without a mold either. You can also make stars or rectangles, any shape that you want, as the bath bomb will still work the same. With my mixture, I found I had enough to make two different bath bombs. However, by doubling or tripling the recipe, you can always make more. And now let's see our bath bombs working. I also decorated my next bath bomb by adding green polka dots to it. Let's now understand what's happening here. 
Once we drop the bath bomb into the water, we then are able to see that a fizzy reaction begins to occur. This can be seen by the bath bomb itself making fizzing noises, as well as bubbles forming in the water. As the baking soda that we put into the bath bomb interacts and dissolves into the water, it's then able to react with the citric acid that we also added into our bath bomb. With this reaction, we're then able to see that a gas called carbon dioxide is produced. As it's a gas, it desires to escape from the water and rise up. This causes the fizzing and bubbling to occur. Over here, we now see our reaction equation, which describes what's happening. And once again, we see that our baking soda interacts with our citric acid, and then as a result is forming carbon dioxide on the right side over here. In addition to the carbon dioxide, we see that more water is produced, as well as a compound called sodium citrate. In this corner, we see that there's an AQ over here. This means that the sodium citrate is actually able to dissolve into the water, which means that we don't actually see it in our water. Overall, we're able to see that from the bath bomb being dropped and starting to dissolve in the water, we're then able to produce a gas called carbon dioxide, which is what is causing our fizzing and bubbling to occur.